Monica and Tyler Aiello are a Denver-based husband and wife team who share a love of science and art. This affinity shows up in her paintings, influenced by astronomy and physics, and his sculptures, which reference atoms, molecules, and other basic life forms. The duo also shares this passion, hosting student workshops where art making becomes a tool for exploring and understanding science and engineering. Take a look. Everything is made of component parts, even society, cultures. It's all the little things that come together to form the holes. Every landscape has its own story. I started out in architecture. I had both sides of my brain working from the time I was very young. Two years ago, some scientist friends of mine were working on a geologic map of Ganymede, which is a large moon of Jupiter, and they called me and asked me to consult on the color selections for the geologic map, so that was a real highlight of my life. <laughs> I'm very interested in geomorphology, the processes and histories of landscapes, and I find that there are so many interesting parallels between geology and the process of painting. One time, the former art critic at the Denver Post came into my studio and he said, you know, your studio reminds me of a chemistry lab. And I think that I probably take a very scientific, experimental approach to the actual making. So I combine alcohol with acrylics, or I use heat to crack surfaces, or I mix different types of pigment in with water so that when the water evaporates, it leaves sediment. So I'm trying to develop new techniques to emulate or capture a geologic process. My work, I think, is a little bit more simplified, minimal. Um, some of the meaning is kind of hidden in the component parts. Nature is always a component of my work. I am constantly looking for universal forms that reproduce either microscopically or on a larger scale. Part of what I'm trying to do is play with those forms to have you think differently about the forms. I work primarily with acrylic inks and I use a lot of water. Essentially these are like watercolors on steroids because I'm using the inks to do watercolor techniques on the paper. I'm working on building up the sedimentary layers of this plateau region. This is the Rincon. It's a region um, on the Colorado River. Right now what I'm doing is just laying layers of torn tissue paper to represent the different layers of those sedimentary strata. There's about 50 to 60 layers on each piece, and I can pretty much see every layer in my head before I begin a piece. Most of what I'm doing is dripping and using a lot of water media technique. Once this is dry, then I'll cover it with a layer of varnish and then wait 24 hours before I get to do the next section. So it's a pretty time consuming process. So these are my circles and I go through probably hundreds, thousands at a time. Um, I used to hand cut them all until I couldn't process that many. And they come in, they're a little sharp on the edges. So I will throw in a couple hundred at a time into a concrete tumbler and tumble the edges off. After I get the circles all cleaned and polished up, then they're ready to go into the forge. And then I'll texturize them. After they're done being textured and they're cool, I then take them over and put a dish shape to them to strengthen the metal. And they get squished to about 2,000 pounds and this further work hardens the metal. And when they're done here, I take them over to a polishing machine where a little bit more of the surface scale comes off. And the pieces tumble in there for about an hour or so. Because it's domed, is going to displace the weight over the surface area instead of in one centralized place. 
there's a certain amount of math I do, and then really it comes down to geometry and dividing the shapes into their geometric components. And this is what the pieces look like when they're done and welded together. It is an interpretation of a radiolarian, which are very complex single cell life forms that comprise the sand in the ocean. So the current series is about the Colorado River, and I'm particularly interested in that portion of the river that is on the Colorado Plateau. I grew up in Colorado and also lived in California during the drought, and so I've, I've kind of experienced those water-related issues. I've been fishing my whole life and used to raft. Um, I've seen 30-some years of change. Living in the western United States, the Colorado River will become one of the most paramount issues in our future. And so if my work can get people to start thinking about it, even just that basic awareness of, oh, what is the Colorado River? What are the issues surrounding it? Then I hope that I'm opening a much larger dialogue. Art is not just about um, making beautiful things, it's about um, the creative use of knowledge. Art can really be that conduit for both conversation, for problem solving, for creativity, and for community building.